Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video and here is the long-awaited promised video that has been long overdue. I did get to record it about a month ago or so and unfortunately in that same time I was actually installing a new SSD in my computer and I accidentally deleted both files from my SSD and my SD card and even after recovering the files somehow they were all corrupt so I couldn't do anything with them. It was a perfectly good recorded video and all it was gone to waste. I spent an hour and a half recording it just to lose it all and spend another two hours trying to recover the files. So unfortunately it was all gone and this thing is already modded. So with that said, I already know the results, I know what happened. Basically when modding these kind of devices, what you're going to get is not a cooler device. That is not going to happen. When I mean cooler is I mean on the outside. But what you will gain is stability in performance. Before, as soon as you run anything, the temperatures on this device will hit 90 degrees Celsius within seconds, which was pretty insane. Which I'll show you what I've done here. It would actually gradually get up to 80 degrees and the performance would actually stay level where you can actually play games properly and not worry too much about throttling because of the temperatures. Temperatures are more stable. They're not cooler. Maybe they are just a tiny bit. But performance wise, it is definitely more stable. So what you get is longer playtime or work without having loss in performance. Anyways, without further ado, let's finally get into this video and show you guys what I've done here. So in the test, what I've done here is actually ran GTA 5. And uh, before and after, and again, I already told you what happened with the results. So to get started, you want to get yourself a guitar pick or something that's not going to break your glass or plastic. Um, something like a small guitar pick. There are different types of pry tools we have here. We have a ton of them. We have those ones and we have the razor looking ones. And of course we have metal ones that look like this. But we're not going to use those because that's going to damage the plastic. Uh, usually you want to get something strong like this Dunlop uh, guitar picker right here. Which is pretty useful. So what I recommend is actually getting started with the top here. Since there are no ports to uh, get in the way or latch on while we're trying to open it up. So you see we got a lip here and then we can just go ahead and slide this in, open it and the whole tablet is basically clipped in two pieces and the back cover will just pop off very easily once you get it started with a lip. And of course your buttons will fall out so you can just put those aside and don't lose them. In the end everything just pops off like so. Alright so here's what we have here. First of all how this works is we got a copper piece of tape that is taking the heat away from this metal part right here. This little thermal pad right there is actually from the CPU originally. This was actually being used on the actual CPU uh, right under this metal piece. And if we go ahead and zoom in right here, let's take a closer look. This is what we are working with. Here we got an SSD right here and uh, we got four screws that are holding this plate in place. And all you'll need is actually a simple Phillips head screwdriver to take these apart. Now one thing before we go ahead and proceed, you probably notice, we already have the pad right here from the original CPU. We have it on top, which when lined up will actually sit right around this area. And then all these blue thermal pads that we have here, they're very thin. That is actually mine. I have bought them off eBay. I'll leave links for those. You can get them on eBay for like a dollar, a big pack of uh, thermal pads you can lay on. And um, you can just go crazy with it if you really want. And I just pretty much put it so it can get an even sitting on this thing. And if you're wondering, some of them did touch, some of them are not. So you got like one, two, three from the thermal pads. I can see one right over here and another one right over there. So not all of them were touching the back, but they still help just a tiny bit. Anyways, you take your Phillips screwdriver and you open this up and you put those screws aside. You don't want to lose them. And you want to do it in the X format. And then it just comes out like so. And that's where you can find my Arctic Silver thermal paste that I have installed here. Now, right over here, not only I have a thermal paste on the side that I have cleaned, then I have more thermal paste on the copper piece that I have actually installed here. It's a copper shim. And right under the copper shim, there's actually more thermal paste that I have installed. So let's go ahead and get a pick and uh, take it apart and see what we have. And here it is. So you can see that the chip is right there. And again, all I have done is taken this copper shim that I bought off eBay for like a dollar or two. And I put thermal paste in between the chip and the copper shim, place the copper shim on top. And then I put some more thermal paste to contact the bigger heat sink right here. And then you basically put it back on top and then you screw it in. And that's actually about it for the thermal mod. So I'm going to go ahead, screw that back in 
and I'll talk some more. And actually, before you go ahead and do anything, make sure you clean the copper shim and this metal piece and anything that you see with rubbing alcohol. You want everything nice and clean before you go ahead and install thermal paste or just pretty much close back anything. And after you carefully put this in right here, you just want to wiggle it around so you can actually get a nice even spread on the thermal paste. All right, so once again, when you close this back up, you want to use the X format to go one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter which order you do it, as long as you're doing it in a cross format. And at this point, you're pretty much done. You take your old thermal pad that you took out from the CPU. Remember, it was under this piece right here where the copper shim was, and there was no thermal paste before, and that's where it was. So you take it out and you put it on top here. Now, if you want, you could put some thermal paste right here and somehow make it work or get another copper shim and put some thermal paste between it and this piece right here, which should improve the temperatures, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now you wanna keep in mind that you don't want anything too thick, otherwise you may potentially be touching the screen on the other side. When there's too much pressure, you'll start seeing some ghosting going on with the screen on the other side because of the pressure. And once again, once you're done, you wanna go ahead and clean up the area here nice and clean. You don't want any oils going on here with rubble alcohol and put the thermal pads that you wanna put like I did here. Here I wanted to cool the SSD and give some more cooling and spread to the heatsink right here. And at this point, you are pretty much done. Now one thing that's gonna be pretty annoying to uh, sit back in would be the buttons right here. So you have two options. You can fiddle around with it until you get it in while trying to clip it back in there. Or what you could do is place two pieces of tape around the edges here, just enough to keep it in place while you clip it back in. Uh, another thing you should keep in mind is that there's actually some magnets that may pop off while you are working on this. So in my case, the magnets fell off from this side and those are the magnets that actually help you attach your keyboard over there. So uh, just keep that in mind. You don't want them clipping in anywhere. And something that I forgot to mention completely, which I'm gonna probably put text warnings before the video starts, is you wanna actually disconnect the battery by pulling this piece right here. So you push it out like so before you start and then you push it back in. Just be really careful with it. You wanna open it up using the tabs on the sides here and that's all you need to uh, disconnect the battery. Just be careful with it. You don't want to break it and you don't want to short out anything while you are working on this. So make sure it's shut down and uh, yeah. So now all I have to do again is to go ahead and pop it back in while dealing with these pretty annoying uh, buttons. So how I'm going to go about this is actually start from the bottom and you may want to get a pick to actually keep them in there while you're trying to clip it in. So there you go and uh, you just clip it back in there and once it's in there you can just go ahead and clip it all around and you're good to go. Clean up the screen, power up, and enjoy some improved performance uh, on this thing. So again, it's not gonna be cooler. All you're gonna get is better performance, or should I say stable performance, because this thing does have performance. It's just that it's not that stable once it does get hot. And uh, it no longer should be hitting 90 degrees Celsius instantly when you launch something. It should gradually get up to 80 degrees and not go over it. So with that said guys, that is pretty much for this video. I know it has been long overdue, but oh well. Here's the video, there you go, and hopefully I'll have the other ones out very soon for the pocket and a couple more tablets and laptops. Anyways, that's actually pretty much of this video, so good luck, take care, and have fun.